do you have an estimate for what the deficit will be this year? We uh, have been providing, as you know, um, reports through to this committee. And uh, the report you received most recently is giving you a comprehensive understanding of the investments we're making. Uh, as we have so just uh, information- yes or no. do, you have, making... uh, do you have a deficit uh, update for us? Yes or no? Uh, Mr. Chair, is there a is there a uh, an approach which is uh, one? Yes, answer which the question. That's just, the uh, right approach. Just hold on, the, the minister. Answer the question, uh, Minister. Just That's hold on. We'll approach, not, we'll not answer take a, the question. Opposition conservatives are pushing hard for an economic update from the government, as you heard there. The prime minister says the pandemic is moving so quickly it makes a budget or a fiscal update moot, at least at this point. But if projections can be made for COVID-19 cases, why not fiscal ones? And what are the political risks for the government if it puts off showing Canadians the running tally of epidemic aid? The Power Panel is here to answer all of those questions for us. Host of the Hurley Burley podcast and partner in the Gandalf Group, David Hurley, joins us. Chief of Government Relations. Relations for University of Toronto and former Saskatchewan Finance Minister Andrew Thompson is with us as well. And Rachel Kern, former Director of Policy to Stephen Harper and Senior Associate, now with Harper and Associates. Hello to all three of you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to start with you. As a former Finance Minister, if you were still a Finance Minister now, would you be delivering some sort of fiscal update? I think it's incumbent on the government to share something with people in terms of what they're expecting to spend. I appreciate, and I think everyone appreciates, there's a lot of volatility still on the revenue side, uh, and that is going to make uh, getting it exactly right pretty hard. But I think what people do want to know is what the, uh, what the estimates are in terms of how much uh, they are prepared to spend, how much of that's going to be borrowing, are there other cuts to other departments that are going to be offsetting some of this. That kind of transparency we've just not seen yet. Uh, whether that has to happen this week, it, I don't know. But it does need to come sometime in the next uh, next couple of weeks, I would argue. Rachel, what do you think? And, and the argument that the Prime Minister thus far and, and Minister Mo Morneau have put forth is we've been transparent about the cost of the programs we've introduced as economic aid. We're in the middle of this right now. Therefore, us projecting what things are going to look like in eight months is, and I'm paraphrasing, but basically impossible. Do you uh, sympathize with that argument or what do you think? So I did sympathize with that argument, is certainly in March or, or and April. I mean, we weren't going to get, um, you know, a, any kind of accurate budget plan when the government was in the midst of rolling out all of these huge support programs, which were absolutely the appropriate response, and the government's uh, delivering on those now. But at some point, we actually need to see the plan. Uh, and we are for, uh, through, I think, the first stage of the response to the crisis now. Uh, and the government needs to at least make uh, some kind of forecast, uh, some kind of estimate as to what uh, it's going to be spending this year, what it thinks its revenues might be. Uh, everyone understands, as Andrew says, that there is volatility, that there is uncertainty. That's true every year. Uh, it's particularly true this year, but there needs to be some kind of plan in place. And, and frankly, Vash, I think the reason they're not doing it is because they don't want to be hemmed in by a plan. Uh, they want to be able to spend whatever it is they want to spend, what it, whatever they want to spend it. Uh, they don't want to be held uh, to an estimate. They don't want to be held to an actual uh, framework for that spending. So. I think this is turning into uh, sort of an opportunistic move, uh, really, to spend whatever it is they think they want to spend without being held uh, to any kind of plan or any kind of accountability framework. Do you think that's true, David? No. Um, <laughs> I don't think so at all. I think the opposition is playing <laughs> pure politics with this, no. uh, this is they want government to guess at things so that they can shoot at them. There's no way that you can make an accurate assumption right now. When is the CERB ending? When is the wage subsidy ending? What is the pace at which the economy reopens? What is the pace at which it recovers? Nobody knows the answers to these questions. The reason this is all politics is because the conservatives have supported every one of the programs that the government's brought in. They haven't opposed the serve. They haven't opposed the wage subsidy. They haven't opposed anything, uh, but they want to attack the deficit. So they don't want to attack the programs. They want to attack the deficit. But you know what? Do your boots. If you people want to run for the next year as the people that are going to withdraw stimulus from the economy as quickly as possible and make your number one priority getting the deficit down, bring on the election. 
Well, Andrew, what do you think about the politics of that? Well, I do think it's an interesting question David raises, but the, the politics cut both ways on this. And I do think the Conservatives, if they are going to become deficit hawks, are going to find very quickly that that's not where Canadian, the Canadian public is. I, uh, however, expect that at some point we've got to show more respect for Parliament uh, and that parliamentary oversight of the government spending than what the Liberals have been showing. And there's somewhere in between those two got to be the right answer. I do think it's fair to be asking how much of this is just going to be debt rolled or bankrolled on debt and how much is going to come out of other program cuts. If it's the latter, Canadians need to know what programs are going to be cut to afford this. So whatever that, you know, there is obviously some calculation that's been done in the Department of Finance. I do think it would do the, the uh, government well to start to bring that forward so Canadians can, can chew on it. Rachel, what do you think of the politics? And, and to David's earlier point, uh, yeah. that if the Conservatives are going to focus on the deficit, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but it's a losing political argument. Yeah, listen, this is not about the deficit or about deficit reduction. We are nowhere near that. Um, yeah, I don't think the government's going to even touch that, actually, for a number of years, if it ever does. This is really about knowing how much money are we actually borrowing? Um, how long is this really sustainable? Uh, you know, the government is bound to put a plan before Parliament, uh, again, as Andrew says, and before the Canadian public, that at least estimates uh, what its spending levels will be in any given year, what its revenue levels will be. That's just basic accountability. Uh, so, so this is not at all about fighting a political battle on, you know, how to reduce the size of the deficit. I, I, who knows what level that will be at, whether it's $300 billion or, or larger. Um, we're nowhere near having the conversation about how to bring that down. We'll eventually have to do it, but we're nowhere near that. Uh, this is really about just getting well, some, what is the point some, of some basic, some basic what is information the point of about how much money the government thinks it might spend this year. Okay, and how I have 15 seconds, to... and then I, I, sorry, I have to fade to black for a second, and then I'll bring, I'll, I'll get David to respond to you. We're stick with us here on Power and Politics. We're back in just a moment. Uh, Rachel had just been making the point, David, that this isn't about the deficit. It's about getting a better idea of what the government has, like what kind of planning they're basing this all on, and what things will look like in the coming. months. Months, you seem to be attempting to reject that argument when I rudely cut all of you off. So go for it. <laughs> well, there's, you know, I mean, uh, Mr. Polyev is getting a lot of play uh, on social media and other places these days for his uh, going at uh, Mr. Morneau in the um, in the House of Commons, and and he's being he's being effective, but it is politics because. He's trying to shift the focus from the spending programs, the interventions in the economy that have made the government very popular during this period of time. He's trying to shift that focus to the deficit. Is it going to hit a trillion dollars? Ooh, wouldn't that be scary? Uh, is it really $250 billion? Could it be $300 billion this year? The reality is these deficit numbers are all in the range of what anybody who knew what was coming down like Scott Clark on my podcast <laughs> forecast two months ago. There's nothing shocking about this. And uh, it's what was expected. And yeah, the government's going to have to come up with a fall fiscal update. But I think anything right now, it would be wildly premature. And the government's the opposition is really engaged no. in politics. Yeah, but David, there's let, an let, let's get Andrew in. Yep. Sorry, I just want to say there's another point to it. And it's not all just fixated on the deficit. It's that there are a lot of other groups lining up saying that there's a need out there. The municipalities have identified significant pressures on them. There's a lot of other parts of the sector that are feeling, uh, of the economy that are feeling they need to bail out too, or at least some kind of bridging support. And then there's reasonable proposals like what the NDPs put forward, suggesting that you should be able to have 10 days of, or 14 days worth of paid uh, sick leave that we're being told, no, that's, no, there's no way that that's affordable. Well, the only way to demonstrate that is to actually bring forward what the spending priorities are, what you think that your uh, deficit projection is going to be, and what your borrowing uh, capability is. And we're not seeing any of that. Rachel, I'll give you the last word because we're about to head to Alberta for the update there. Yeah, yeah, this was nowhere near what was predicted, Vashi. The parliamentary budget officer had predicted $100 billion, then $250 billion, and now he said it's going to be considerably greater than that. No one predicted this level of spending. There has to be some plan in place. The opposition can't simply hand the government a blank check. I take that point, but doesn't that underscore the fact that if you're saying no one could predict it, doesn't that underscore that it's hard to predict what happens in the next six months, too? 
Sure it is. It always is. But again, we are through the first really acute response phase of this crisis. A lot of the big the big ticket programs have been announced and rolled out already. There is more ability now, I think, to foresee a little bit in the future what the government will be spending, or at least there should be. Fair point. We got to go. I'm sorry. Alberta has just started. Thank you very much to all three of you. Thanks to Andrew Thompson, uh, Rachel Curran, and David Hurley.